typical fall day here in the Emerald City, a little cloudy. And on a Friday, yes, the traffic was bad. So the Huskies hoping for a much sunnier day inside of Alaska Airlines Arena as they take on their first brand new conference opponent in the Colorado Buffalo. It's I'm Michael Preston, alongside Gretchen Killebrew, former Husky volleyball player and Gretchen. For Colorado, they really lean heavily on one outside hitter in particular, and that's Miss Kara Schroeder. Yeah, Kara Schroeder, the junior outside hitter from San Diego, California. She gets 36% of the total attempts for the team. She gets three times as many sets as anybody else out there. So she's gonna have to swing hard and aggressive tonight and be smart about the block. In terms of kills, she's got the next closest person doubled up, better than doubled up on the kill right now. On the defense for Colorado, they got to do a good job keeping the UW attack from getting to them, and that all starts with Megan Beckwith in the backcourt there, Libero. Yeah, she's fourth in the Pac-12 in digs per set, but she's going to be very, very busy tonight. Washington has a lot of good hitters who know how to use hands and know how to hit the shot, so she's going to be running all over the court. On the other side of the net for the University of Washington, it's all about that D, 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 defense. It's a basketball call I love to hear. <laughs> Bianca Rowland, her second defensive Pac-12 player of the week honors this week, and she's just sensational up front. Oh, what a phenomenal blocker she is. She's 12th nationally in blocks per set, which is awesome. Washington as a team is number two nationally in blocks per set. Now she gets a lot of help up front, and her teammate Lauren Barfield not too much worse nationally. 14th in blocks per set nationally. She's pretty good as well. Oh, yeah. She's pretty awesome. And she's a really tall player. If you have a problem picking her out, look for the tallest player on Washington's side. She is so awesome. She's improved so much since last year. And what a great, great athlete she is. A bit intimidating for the Colorado attack to come towards. And then when Washington's attacking, the freshman sensation, Krista Van Sant's going to be doing a lot of it for him. Oh, yeah. Krista is doing so well this year. Last year, she was a national Gatorade Player of the Year. She was a top-ranked recruit by PrepVolleyball.com, the first ever snatched by Washington. And she's getting more sets, just barely, than anybody else on the Washington team. But what impresses me the most about her, she can find any seam in the block and expose it. She is a phenomenal hitter. That's a pretty darn good resume, if I do say so myself. Buffaloes didn't bring their Buffalo Ralphie up. I'm a little disappointed by that, but they are up as Pac-12 opponents in Alaska Airlines Arena for the first time. We will bring you set number one live from Alaska Airlines Arena. It's the Huskies and the Buffs live on UWTV. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. We can see head coach Jim McLaughlin there ready to shake hands with Colorado head coach Liz Kritza here in the first, well, it's not the first Pac-12 matchup for Washington, but it's their first against the new opponent in the Colorado Buffaloes. Once again, I'm Michael Preston, Gretchen Killebrew to my right. And we are just about to get underway here at Alaska Airlines Arena as the teams take the court. We'll get this first substitution out of the way real quick of the libero, and then we will be underway. The Huskies ranked number three in the nation this week, same as last week in the national polls. So they are looking pretty good. Colorado, we were talking about this before the match. We say, you know, it's Colorado, they're 0-7 in conference, 5-10 and 10 overall. How do you get motivated to play a team like Washington? You know, if you're Colorado, you have to think Washington has everything to lose and we have everything to gain this match. So let's play all out and let's give it our best shot. Washington will be serving first here in set number one. It will be the senior center from Lafayette, Colorado. Evan Sanders back to serve for the dogs and we are underway here at Alaska Airlines Arena. And a service error right off the bat for Washington gives the Buffs their first point. Not the way you want to start this one. There's Megan Beckwith back to serve. Sophomore from Leesburg, Virginia gives the serve right back to Washington. So not a very auspicious start for either team so far. Colorado really wants you to start with the serve, I think. Exactly, Van Sant back to serve. She's got 13 service aces on the air. Good enough for eighth in the conference. Doesn't get one there. Schroeder with her first kill on the evening. First of what I'm thinking will be many. She averages about four and a quarter a set. As we said in the pre-show, 244 total, double 
by more than double anyone else on the team in terms of number of kills. Service there from Michelle Miller. Here's Ross coming to the net. And Alexis keeps that alive in that corner. Just a tip right back down for Lauren Barfield. Takes care of that one nicely. And you have to give credit there to Summer Ross for swinging hard. You know, if you're Colorado, you don't want to dig the ball tight to the net. You want to keep it off the net because it's better for your team. Talked about how tall Lauren Barfield was in the pre-show. Six feet, five inches is her listed height. And that one going to fall in. Some open space on Colorado's side, so point goes to Washington. Jenna Orlandini, the sophomore libero from La Cañada, California. Back to serve, and that set is long, and Munoz takes advantage. First time we've called her name tonight. The junior from Monroe gets a point for the Huskies. Another one for the Dogs. Take another look at that one again. And Munoz makes that one look pretty easy there. Here's Orlandini back to serve. A little attempt at the tap over there from Ortiz Ruiz. And that one is long. And the point goes to Washington. Orlandini back to serve again. Going to Schroeder again, and they can't get it. Or can't, she can't get it to fall. Van Sant digs it out. And Moon goes with emphasis on that one. And a point for the dogs again. And what's really winning the game right now for UW is the serving and passing. That last time, Colorado, those are first good pass in this set so far. Orlandini just trying to float that one in. Unsuccessful on that one. They're going to set up Lindau right there, but. No soup for you, as they're <laughs> fond of doing here at Alaska Airlines Arena. And a point for Washington. 7-2, the Washington advantage. And right into the block again. There she is, Bianca rolling with the block. And a timeout is going to be called by the Buffaloes. We will take a quick timeout as well when we come back. The Huskies with an 8-2 lead over the Buffaloes here on UWTV. Welcome back inside Alaska Airlines Arena. The Dogs with an 8-2 advantage over the Buffs in set number one here at Alaska Airlines Arena. The first time Washington's played Colorado as a member of the same conference. Another tap over the net there from Lindau. Unsuccessful, Munoz flying into the net. And that falls right down at the block of Colorado. So another point for Washington. And Colorado is really struggling to put a ball down against the Huskies. They have to be able to find a way to find the court. Get to some rather important stats to do with that here momentarily. Orlandini, she seems to have had the serve forever here. And a, another bad pass. I believe they're going to call, yes, they are going to call Miller into the net on that one. A well, point for Washington there to double digits at 10-2. Colorado, 11th in attacking percentage in the conference, or hitting percentage, if you like to call it that, at 19.3. Washington, first in opponent hitting percentage. They don't let you get the ball in, and a mistake there from Kylan Munoz gives Colorado the serve back. First time in seven or eight points. Colorado really needs to get that hitting going. They're hitting negative 25% right now. Roland goes up to get that one. Good dig by the bus from Schroeder in the backcourt. Van Sant sends that one back over the net. Don't think she intended that one, but it'll do. And that one is wide off the hand of Ortiz Ruiz. So a point for Washington. And yet another error for the bus. It's not what they need. They need a hook ball in the court. Four errors so far for the visitors from Boulder, Colorado. Orlandino dig that one back. Now Munoz flying in, and there you go. Some good momentum for Colorado. Ortiz Ruiz and Lindau in on that block. So a point for Colorado as Blaha comes into the game for the first time today. Lindau, a sophomore from Erie, Colorado with the serve there. 
Roland goes over, pokes it up. She's done that a couple of times now. There's Alexis and off Van Sant and out, so a point for Colorado. And you're seeing those soft shots from Bianca because she and Setter Evan Sanders just aren't really connecting yet. They've had a hard time this whole season of really connecting. So that's what you're seeing that. Ross keeps that one alive, and Sanders has had to play it back to her. And there we go. A little miscommunication in the backcourt there off the hands of Miller. And a point for the dogs as Holford will come in to serve for Washington. Shot of Holford there, the junior from Long Beach, California. Shorter pokes that one over. What a great dig from Orlandini coming up from the backcourt. Now Van Sant, there she is for the first time tonight. I was wondering when we get to call her name, her first kill on the evening, keeps the ball on Washington's side of the court. And you get to see why she's so good right here. She finds just an open spot of the court and just puts it right in the corner down the line. Not bad for a freshman. Two-time freshman of the week in the conference, too. Another great block from Washington. And another one there again. Really nice the first time, even better the second as they get the point there. It's 14-5. Huskies with the first set lead. Karasher is trying to find some court there. She roll shots, Orlandini digs it. That time she swings and she gets blocked. And off the block and out. So a point for Colorado. They were waiting for confirmation on that one. We get it a kill for Alexis. And a couple of substitutions here for Colorado. This is going to be Kelsey English coming in. And then coming in to serve is Alyssa Valentine. Orlandini with the dig. Sanders going to set up Van Sant. But she trailed a little bit on that one. Great dig from Beckwith for the Buffs. And Roland looked like she just Floated in the air and brought the house down with that one point for the Huskies. Take another look at that one. And that's what she can do when she and Evan Sanders connect. She did that all year last season long, but this year she's struggling with that connection. But that's what she should be doing every time. Oh, that seems to be having a little trouble with their serve receive as that one's into the net. Now, point for Washington. Do you see a little trouble with their serve receive so far in set one? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's definitely a weak point for Colorado, and it's not good for, for them either. Washington has the most aces in the Pac-12, and if you want to win matches, you have to win the serving and passing, hitting, blocking, all that secondary to passing and serving. It's seven service aces against Arizona a couple of weeks ago. That one goes long, so a point for Washington, or Colorado, I beg your pardon there. And back to serve for Colorado is Alexis. That one off the top of the net. And Barfield uses all 77 inches of her frame to get up and get that one, and a point for Washington. It's amazing me how high she's able to get on that one. She almost got her arm above that ball, and it was so high, and she just brought it straight down on the other side of the net. Yeah, it's going to be really easy for her if Colorado gives her one blocker all night long, too. Two hits going to be called on Colorado, so 18-7. The Buffs find themselves now almost a dozen points down here in set number one. Once again, if you're not quite familiar with volleyball scoring, first to 25, got a win by two when we play best of five sets. The third service error of the set for Washington. A little uncharacteristic for the Dogs. Head coach Jim McLaughlin's got to be pretty happy with his team so far, but that would certainly be the one point of contention I think he would have. Yes, especially that's the second service error for setter Evan Sanders. Van Sant is going to have to send that one back over. And a great kill there from English on the right side. She's averaging just short of two per set. A lot of power behind that one and a point for Colorado, a much needed point for the Buffs. Take a look at Beckwith there, back to serve. Orlandini, great dig off that serve. There's Van Sant near side, good block from Colorado, better dig from Orlandini. I don't think Sanders saw Van Sant right behind her for that set. It looks like Colorado spreading the attack around a little bit. Went to Schroeder for the first time in a while there, but it's out of bounds, so a point for Washington. And Schroeder is trying to do some different things, find some hands, but that time she just missed a little bit wide. They are spreading it around a little better. Schroeder with six total attacks. 
Alexis with six, Lindau with five. So now spreading it around a bit. Speaking of spreading it around, there's Kelsey English with just her second attack and her second kill. So a point for the Buffs, and they're finally into double digits at 10 points. Another double substitution for Colorado. Ortiz Ruiz back in, as well as Michelle Miller. Orlandini with a nice dig, and Munoz comes flying in on that one. But a great dig from Beckwith and a good save for Colorado neutralizes that great attack from Washington. Just Ross near side can't find it. Schroeder, what a great instinct there. Just sends it right back over. Yeah, and if I'm, if I'm Jim McLaughlin, I'm wondering why his blockers weren't ready for that. She didn't show any sign that she was going to set that. You knew she was going to hit that ball, so why aren't we ready for that? 19-11, that's an excellent point, and Colorado's going to give it right back. Cannot do that if they want to stay in this one. 20-11 score in set number one. Orlandini over the net. Handled easily by Colorado. Schroeder again off the block and out. So a point for the Buffs. You know, Colorado, the, one of the big differences between Colorado and Washington is that Colorado sets the ball really tight. That time Kara Schroeder did a nice job of tooling the block, but that's typically very hard to do. Washington, on their hand, has a tendency to set the ball off the net, which makes it easier for their hitters to hit more of the court, tool the hands, make tips and roll shots. Schroeder has 12 service aces on the year. That, unfortunately, was a service error. So 21-12, the score on that receive was long off that serve. And Roland got up there. Nice block for Colorado, though. And Munoz again off the block. And that one will fall short of the outstretched hands of Beckwith and Schroeder. So it's 22-12, the lead back to double digits for Washington. This is one of the big improvements Kyla Munoz has made from last year. Last year, she just would swing cross court, swing cross court, swing cross court. But this year, she's making a better selection of shots. Like that time, she tooled the hands a little bit off speed, and she's able to get the kill. Colorado takes a timeout. We'll keep it right here. The Huskies with a 22-12 lead here in set number one. We'll take a look at the Pac-12 standings brought to you by Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. Look at all those ranked teams near the top. UCLA and USC tied at 6-1. Washington tied with Oregon at 5-1. Washington, of course, dealing Oregon. Their only conference loss on the year. California and Stanford both there at 5-2. 4-3 in conference, respectively. And then Oregon State, Arizona. Washington State, Utah, Colorado, Arizona State. Five teams in the top seven nationally. Illinois at number one, which is outstanding for the Pac-12. It kind of speaks to how competitive this conference truly is. Yeah, the nickname for this conference is Conference of Champions, and you're seeing why in volleyball the most national championships by any conference. And there's a reason for it. They always have outstanding recruiting classes. If you have a question for us, well, more for Gretchen than for me, she'd be better <laughs> at answering it. UW Husky Vision at gmail.com. That's an awfully cute young blonde man right there. That'd be my son. Yes, he is. What an adorable young man. Oh, thank you. Summer Ross back to serve for Washington. Norlandini with the easy dig in the backcourt there. Here comes Munoz flying up far side. Great block by Colorado. Seem to be doing a little better on the block as the set goes on another block of Munoz. See if Sanders goes another direction, and she does. It's Summer Ross, and that one's long. Good instincts in the backcourt by Colorado to let that one go, and it's 22-13. Buffaloes get a point back there. Jessica Aschenbrenner in the backcourt to serve. Check that, and that is Nikki Lindau. Didn't see the number correctly, and a great kill from Munoz to get the serve back. She just has got so much power behind that hit. Take another look. I wouldn't want to be in the way of one of those. Yeah, it'd be helpful for Colorado if their blocker went with went with the outside. But instead, she actually guessed that they were going to set Bianca Roland. So Kylan had a one-on-one -on -one situation. Holford with the serve there. Colorado's just going to have to send it back over. They tried to push it beyond the backcourt. Orlandini's there now. Summer Ross hits one long. Didn't touch the Colorado block. So a point goes to Colorado. Those are two very uncharacteristic errors by Summer Ross. Usually she likes to go more cross court or more down the line, but now she's trying to hit in the middle of the court and really doesn't look like she's connecting that well with the ball. And so it's kind of floating them out of bounds. 
Ross hitting negative 20% on the day. Just one kill, two errors, and five total attacks. That is a service error for Colorado. 24-14 set point for Washington. Bianca Rowland back to serve for the set point here. Schroeder comes flying in and right into the Washington block. What an appropriate way for them to get the final point of the set right into the block. 25-14, Washington with the set number one victory. Pretty good first set for the Huskies. When we come back, it's set number two here at Alaska Airlines Arena on UW-TV. Welcome back to Alaska Airline Arena. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by BECU and Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. The Huskies with that 25-14 first set victory, and you see why right there with the hitting percentage. Washington at a pretty pedestrian 24%, but Colorado in the negative at 3.8% of the time. So that means when they're attacking that, it's unsuccessful most of the time, blocks-wise, for Washington 5-1. We'll take a look at the highlights for set number one, and it was pretty much all Washington in that first set. You see the block from Roland right there. And then a great block there from right, or right, I beg your pardon, went down the block of Colorado, and Ross with another good kill there. So Washington been really getting it done on the kills. A great save from Orlandini. She's had a very quietly had a good night, and there's Van Sant again. That was that one you mentioned earlier. Just finds that open, that open hole in the block, and she just fits it right through. You know, Colorado, they have everybody except for two hitters in the negative right now. So, first of all, they need to start passing better. If they can't pass, they're not going to have their hitters be productive at all. So, they really need to focus on their passing, keeping the ball off the net, and finding a way to find the four instead of the Washington block. Washington with five blocks in the first set. There's absolutely a reason why they are such a dominant setting team. They're so tall up front. They just don't allow you any free points. And Van Sant near side gets the Huskies off to a good start in set number two. You see Colorado in almost a semi-rotation defense where the setter's coming up, but the middle back isn't moving quite over to the line, and Van Sant just exposes that. Just roll shot down the line, easy kill for her. Sanders with the serve there. Nice poke over by English. Would have been a lot better if it had stayed in, though, for her. And Sanders will go back to serve again. So good instincts on that one from English. She just didn't place it right. Nice. Give you an idea once again of how good Washington is on the block. They held Arizona State to a zero hitting percentage earlier this year. English right into the block, and that one can't stay alive. Off about five different buffs hands on that one. Huskies. And the third straight point to begin the set for Washington. I'm going to kind of beat a dead horse, I feel like. But Colorado has to keep the ball off the net. They're making a mistake. It's so hard for Kara Schroeder on the left side to hit a ball that's set so tight. Speaking of, there she is. Gets the first point of the set for Colorado. And you can see the difference there. The set was off the net. She can see the block in front of her and tr instead of trying to rescue the set, essentially. Back to serve for Colorado is Beck with their great sophomore libero. And Ross on the near side. Can't get that one to fall. Nice dig from the buffs. And into the net. Good dig there from Richardson. Haven't called her name yet tonight. And Richardson had fallen down to try to field that one. And it looked like Valentine had gotten her hands to it. So thank goodness English was there to clean it up. And right into the block. There we go. Colorado getting off to a good start after dropping the first three points of the set. Summer Ross is having a very uncharacteristic night for her. Right now she's hitting negative 250. You don't see that much from her. She's a two-time World Beach champion. So she knows how to hit around a good block. Speaking of a good block, good block from Colorado. There was Schroeder left side and out, but it didn't touch the block, so a point goes to the dogs. Speaking of Ms. Van Sant, there she is, back to serve the freshman from Redlands, California. Ninth in the conference in kills per set. Two-time freshman conference player of the week. And right off the block and back down. There's Lauren Barfield again along with Kylan Munoz. Another point for Washington. 
And Kelsey English that time, now she's had two errors in a row. She started off the first set. She was the only one hitting 1,000 for Colorado. Now it's two straight errors for her. Poked over and almost had Washington on their heels on that one. It turns out Lindau was able to, a uh, bit of a campfire right around that ball, and then Barfield can't pick it up, so a point for the Buffaloes. Yeah, you don't like campfire defenses very much. No, you do no. not. You like, it, you like it when camping, but not in your volleyball yes. defenses, you don't. Ross, and that was off the block and out. Or no, I beg your pardon, that was off the net. I thought that went off the Colorado block. I think it did. Or didn't they call it in? Well, yeah, my confusion, it went in. Either way, a Colorado <laughs> point there. It was a little hard to see with our viewing angle. We're mm -hmm. just to the right of the camera you see right there. And Barfield, what a hit. What momentum Washington needed to get back from their senior middle blocker. Yeah, and Colorado is going one-on-one -on -one with her. Lauren Barfield is going to put that ball away all night long. Right now she's hitting 1,000. She's three for three. It's good to be in baseball, good to be in basketball, and great to be <laughs> in volleyball. And what a kill, what authority from Lindau on that one. You can almost feel the shockwave up here. Colorado in set number two, down just one point to the Huskies. Colorado's most impressive kill tonight have come from a slide, from a middle hitting that slide. So they found a little bit of a weakness. Now they just need to expose it. Great dig from Schroeder in the backcourt off that Ross hit. And out off the block. And the Buffs have set number two tied up at half a dozen apiece. Landini will take that serve. Now over there to Lindau, do it go out? Yes, it did, I beg your pardon, that was Alexis. And the Buffs have a lead for the first time today. Beg your pardon, for the second time today, they were up 2-1 earlier in the first set. And Sanders can't find that one off the Orlandini ding, so Another point for the Buffs, their largest lead of the day now at two points. And now they're starting to make things more difficult for Washington by serving tougher. This is such a huge difference for them. Munoz comes flying in and nothing Schroeder can do about that one. That one was coming right for her noggin. Can't do much of that. Take another look at this. Munoz just gets every ounce of power behind that one and a point for Washington. Service ace for Summer Ross there. Mark it up her 15th of the year. Sixth in the conference coming into the night. There she is again. That one will not be an ace. So just has to send it back over. Setting up Munoz near side and that one will fall. And another point for Washington. They've retaken the lead. Three straight points now to 9-8. Ross tries to float that one in there. Fielded well by Ash and Brenner. Good block at the net from Sanders and Barfield. Or no, I beg your pardon, that was Roland. And that one is off of Ross, I believe, and out. So a point for Colorado. Lindau back to serve, but that one very low into the net. Very bad miss hit there from Lindau on that serve. Gives the Huskies an easy point. Now when you're tied with the number third team, or the third ranked team in the nation, you don't want to miss a serve like that. You want to make them beat you instead of giving them the match. Beating yourself, so to speak, absolutely. You ever get a little nerve rattled against a team this good? Or do you just kind of up your level of competition a little bit, so to speak? Yeah, for me, it was always, whenever we played a top ranked team, it was always just excitement because we got to go at one of the best teams in the country and it was never nerve wracking. It was just fun. As you said earlier, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Exactly. While the Huskies in this case, everything to lose and nothing to gain. Well, they do have something to lose, <laughs> a win in the conference, but a lot more to lose than Colorado. What a attack from Van Samp, but well dug out by Schroeder. And off the block, she gets another kill. And another point for Colorado. They are staying close in this one. It's 11-10. Fifth kill, Schroeder. That is tops on the team. Alexis with four, Lindau with three, English with two. 
but the match high belongs to Munoz with seven, and that is another service error for Colorado. Valentine, the guilty party on that one. And as you just said, don't give points to Washington if you want to stay in this one. Bad receive on that serve again for Colorado. So problem they had in the first set, coming back to haunt them a bit there. And Barfield gets up and gets down. What a kill from Lauren Barfield. And again, here she is. She's one-on-one -on -one with Colorado. If I'm Evan Sanders, I would set her every opportunity I had because she only has one blocker. She's going to win that battle almost every single time. Roland with the service error on that one, so a point for the Buffaloes. As Richardson will come back in to serve. Thirteen, eleven. Huskies with the second set lead. Was it in? Yes, it was. What a hit there from Krista Van Sant cross court. That's a difficult hit too. Oh yeah, she painted the line that time. This is so sharp cross court, just inside the block. Libero thought it was out. That's a hard one to dig. That one looked like a little uneven set, but a great kill there from English. She did a good job to stay with that one. It looked like it was coming towards the stands really quickly, and she kind of changed direction a little bit there. We're going to take Colorado with the serve here. Beckwith back to serve. That one touches the net, barely gets over. Barfield puts that into the block, cleans up the mess, though. Ross sends that over. Good dig by Colorado in the backcourt. Now Schroeder, far side, running into the block. Lauren Barfield's there again, and a timeout is going to be called by Colorado. We will take a quick break here at Alaska Airlines Arena. You're watching Husky Volleyball on UWTV. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by BECU and Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. Washington with a three-point lead here in set number two over the new Pac-12 members, the Colorado Buffaloes. First time these teams are meeting as members of the same conference. So a little bit of history here tonight at Bank of America Arena. And Kylan Munoz leading the way for the Huskies, hitting 4-17, leading the team with seven kills. And she's listed as a junior, but you may know that she originally signed with BYU and then decided to come to UW instead, and she lost a year of eligibility. So this is only her second year playing. Junior by eligibility, second year of playing, and another point after the service error from Van Sant. That one's wide. So a point for Colorado. They're now within one again, keeping it much closer here in set number two. That first set was a 25-14 victory for Washington. And off the block, no one there to get that for Colorado. So a point for the Huskies. And Kylan Munoz improves a 462 on the night there. Colorado just doesn't have an answer for her yet. Hopefully, if you're Colorado, you need to figure out something soon before this match is over. Barfield, the next closest person with four kills. Munoz has her doubled up at eight. What a kill there from Nikki Lindau off the block. Looked like she was really trying to get her team back into that one with a big, big kill on that one, and she got it, a point for the Buffs. The slide's working really well tonight for Colorado. If, if you're a Colorado, you want to keep running that, keep exposing that, but first you have to get a good pass to the setter. Good block from Colorado. Little poke over there from Alexis. And rolling a little low set from Sanders. All she can do is poke it over with her left hand. Fielded, though, from Colorado and miss hit off the right hand of Alexis. The red shirt freshman from Brighton, Colorado, gives the Huskies the serve back in a 17-15 lead. Just Ross back to serve. Orlandini thought it was her turn. Ross is back to serve here. That one is long, didn't touch the block where Colorado's asking for it. They won't get it. 18-15. Even though that hit was out, I really like that hit from Alexis there. She's really aggressive going after it. That's what Colorado needs to do more of. They need to swing hard. That's the only way you're going to get a ball down against the Huskies. And especially if the Huskies keep shooting themselves in the foot like that. Another service error for Washington. They had three of them in the first set. Number 
Nikki Brown in for the first time for Colorado. Freshman outside hitter from Santa Barbara. Rolling right into the block. Colorado with a good block there. Going to switch it up, go to Munoz near side here. And I don't know where this one's going, but Colorado's just going to be satisfied to put it back over. Got a little out of system on that one. Rolling into the block again. Sanders going to set up. Van Sant coming out of the backcourt and wide. Didn't touch the block, so a point for the Buffs there within one. That's a really rare circumstance for UW to, for them to get a free ball and then to make a hitting error. Usually you don't want to give a team like UW a free ball because they will punish you for it. Same mistake, make a mistake with a breaking ball for a pitcher in baseball. The good one's punishing, UW wasn't able to do it there, but Summer Ross gets a point right back. A really, really good choice here by Evan Sanders. The blockers for Colorado loading up a little bit on Kylan Munoz. And so Summer Ross is one-on-one -on -one back there. It's Holford back to serve. Alexis far side right into the block. Was it out? It was. Looked like Bianca Rowland a little surprised by that. Point for Colorado. And actually the official signaled the wrong way on that one. So everybody was a little confused, but they did give Colorado the point. 19-18, Huskies with a slim one-point lead. Sanders going to set up and roll, and it really does look like she just kind of stops her jump, midair floats, and then brings that one down, a point for the Huskies. We get to see it again here. Bianca Rowland is such a tremendous athlete. It seems like she's up there for so long, but as a setter, you love having that. It's such an easy target to hit. Barfield back in for Washington, the big blocker for the Huskies. Standing at six feet, five inches tall. Van Sant can't keep it alive. Matter of fact, it hits the official on that one. A point for the Buffaloes. They keep it in this one. 2019, once again, you got a win by two, first to 25. It used to be first to 30, then before that it was first to 25, then before that it was first to 30, so it's switched a number of before times. Before that, it was first to 15, side out scoring. My goodness. And a service error there from Colorado. At least Richardson, the guilty party. Don't want to do that against the Huskies, as we discussed it before. They are at Blackjack, Colorado at 19. Scoring's always switched a lot in volleyball. The NCAA always switching things up, but that one out. Evan Sanders with the service error right back. Discussed a little bit before the game. You, you mentioned they try to make it a little more like the international game with these rules a little bit. Yeah, that's why the NCAA keeps changing the rules. They want to make it more like the international game. So um, when I was playing, they added the barrel position. Before that, it was just defensive specialists. They've changed the number of subs several times. They changed the points. They changed the type of scoring. They changed everything to make it almost identical to the international rules. Point for Washington on the service error. Van Sant back to serve here. You see her season statistics. Hitting just a shade under 300. 30%. This one far side. What a kill from English to keep her team in this one. It's 22-21. The Buffs will not go away quietly. That's for sure here in set number two. Playing some inspired volleyball right now against number three ranked Washington. Munoz off the block and Colorado keep it alive. They cannot. So Munoz gets the kill, her ninth on the evening. And a timeout is going to be called by Colorado, their second of the set. 23-21, the Huskies advantage here in set number two. So Ross's kill rate has improved just a little bit. But so far for Washington, it's still Munoz leading the way with nine kills. For Colorado, they really are spreading it around a lot. English, Schroeder, and Alexis each with five kills. Lindau with four. And we mentioned that because we talked about it before. We've talked about it a few times. Schroeder is really their main offensive threat, mostly. She's got more than double the amount of kills of anybody else on the team. But tonight, they're really spreading it around. Yeah, I think... Colorado's really found a weakness in Washington's block. You see them going to set the slide a lot more. So that's what they're doing right now. And that's how they're scoring points against this Washington team. Don't miss the brand new series, Great Moments at Husky Stadium, airing right after tonight's match at 9 p.m. Tonight's episode features Husky coach Don James' first Apple Cup victory in 1975. You can find out more by visiting uwtv.org slash greatest moments and be sure to tune in every Friday night at 6 and 9 p.m. only on UWTV Channel 27. I know I certainly will be, that's for sure. A lot of great moments over at Husky Stadium, of course, being renovated after 
this football season, or actually they'll play the Apple Cup over at CenturyLink so they can get started a little early. Actually, my family and I were just watching a story about Marcus Tuiasasopo, who is the brother of assistant coach for the Huskies, Leslie Gabriel, and about one of his games versus Stanford. It was very inspiring. I believe that would be his 300-200 game, if uh, I stand correct. I'll check the yeah. intermission, but I believe that was his 300-200 game. And that one right into the post for Colorado, so it's set point for Washington. A little tighter in this second set. It was 25-14 in set one. A chance for set point here at 24-21 to take a 2-0 set advantage into the locker room. Orlandini with the serve. We'll see if they go to Schroeder. No, a tool at the net there, but Colorado gets it back. They will go to Schroeder. Sanders with a nice dig in the backcourt. Orlandini going to set up. Munoz, can't you get to 10 kills? Not on that one. Great dig here. Schroeder far side again off the block. What a dig from Orlandini. Boy, if Washington gets the point here, all the credit to her for that one, certainly. Lindau, no power on that one. Back to Munoz. Chance for 10 kills and a good dig. A nice rally going here between the Buffs and Dogs. And what a dig flying in was Sanders on that one. Another tool at the net. Another save from Van Sant. Ross sends it back over. Colorado saves that one. Another tool at the net and poked right back over. Munoz pokes it long and that one will fly out. And a point for the Huskies. What a way to wrap up set number two as these teams go to the locker room. The amount of cheering very appropriate for that final point. Well, all this volleyball season, UWTV is pleased to present a new feature called Quick Set. Tonight's Quick Set volleyball player, Amanda Gill, is our guide. Amanda sits down with her setters and with fellow hitter, Gabby Parker, as they tackle the question, who do you set when there's no time to think? Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena here in the beautiful Emerald City on the gorgeous campus of the University of Washington. The Huskies lead the Buffs two sets to none coming out of the break. Once again, I'm Michael Preston. This is Gretchen Killebrew. Take a look at your stats after a couple of sets. Kills pretty even. The digs certainly in the Buffs' favor, but there is the big favor in blocks for Washington and a big issue for Colorado in attacking errors, contributing to that 3.4 hitting percentage. The unforced errors are a really, really big problem for both teams right now. So far, Washington, this match has seven service errors. They don't normally do that, but like you said, Michael, the hitting errors for Colorado are really hurting them right now. They need to find a way to keep the ball on the court. A couple of players for Washington certainly were above the rest in those first two sets, and one of them was definitely Kylan Munoz. You see her right there having herself an absolutely outstanding night for the Huskies. Take a look at how she did in sets one and two, and it's worth taking a pretty good look at, Gretchen. And she's really found a good way to, to just find holes in the Colorado block, to find open spots in the court tonight. She's swinging hard. She's hitting with range. She's doing all the things that a good outside hitter should be doing. Having a really good night. The junior from Monroe, Washington, with 10 kills. That's good enough to lead the team. And there's the other person having a pretty good night. Second time in a row we've done a broadcast. She's been really good. Lauren Barfield with four kills, hitting about 50%, but she's just been such a presence up front at the net for the Huskies. And Lauren Barfield is just really consistent. One thing I really like about her is she's always good hitting. She's always good blocking. Brent, the senior from Bellevue, Washington, went to Newport High School. Pretty good school if there ever was one for sure, especially volleyball wise they're a very good school. Ballerfield there again, waiting their turn to get on the court. Just about 30 more seconds before we get on with set number three. Once again, Washington with a two to zero set lead. Went 25-14 in set number one in Colorado. Was able to keep it a little closer in set number two. Huskies once again ranked third in the country in volleyball. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by BECU and Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. Washington will once again have the serve to begin set number three. First time we've seen her at home in the conference schedule. Jenny Nogueres in the backcourt to serve for Washington. A sophomore from Calle, Puerto Rico. 
believe she's in the set for Miss Sanders. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, they were playing her a lot more. I, they, I think they were starting to think about possibly running a 6-2. Then Emma Sanders kind of pulled her with the starting job. But now, obviously, Coach McLaughlin not happy with Evan Sanders. And so putting the garrison, hopefully, for a little bit different result on offense. She's back to serve right away. And we are underway with set number three at Alaska Airlines Arena. Looks like Alexis had to wait on that one a little bit. Orlandini going to set up Van Sant far side. A lot of power on that one, but too long and a point to open the third set for Colorado. You know, Michael, something that Jim McLaughlin does not do often at all is change setters, especially in the middle of a match. Usually once he has a starting setter, that's it for the season. This is actually the first time I've ever seen Jim McLaughlin change setters in a tight conference match. Well, what does that kind of do for your offense, your attacking, when you change the setter? What, uh, what, what changes for the hitters? You know, every setter has a little bit different touch, different way of delivering the ball. So for middles, it can really affect them. It can really affect their timing. Um, really affect their connection. Um, sometimes, you know, you want your setters to have the same location and same tempo, especially to the pins. But sometimes it can be just slightly different. So the outside hitters may have to make a little adjustment here. Certainly a game of inches, heck, even of oh, yes. centimeters, that's for sure. So just that little, little difference, as you said, can be huge. English going up and getting that one. She's been putting in a yeoman's effort for Colorado tonight, hitting just 18.2%. But that's actually best on the team right now. Colorado is a heat team hitting just 3.3%. But they do have a 2-1 third set lead. And like I said earlier, they've really found that weakness in Washington going on the slide. So I'd look for Colorado to run that a lot this set, hopefully trying to take away a match or a set away from Washington here. That one just fell down again. It looked like. Lindau just mistimed her jump on that one, and a point will go to Washington, tied back up at a deuce apiece. You'll see from Colorado when their middles are successful, they're staying off the net. That time she was right underneath the ball when she jumps. Schroeder just pokes that one back over. Orlandini now over to Munoz, pushes it into the backcourt, can't find any open real estate back there, and right into the block, but out. So the Buffs pick up the point there, and once again, Buffalo's, I think it'd be fair to say, playing pretty scrappy volleyball right now, staying in this one. I think three they're, two. they're doing a really nice job of finding a, a weakness in Washington, the number three team in the country. That's not so easy to do. They're exposing it. They're serving tougher. That's always going to go well for them. And another kill for Colorado. So a point for the Buffaloes. Liz Kritza, the head coach for Colorado, here by way of Tulane. Got to be pretty happy with her team right now. Van Sant fields that one. Munoz with the attempted spike there. Can't find any open room. And that one right into the block. And it looked like Schroeder maybe should, she was just trying to roll it over the block a little bit there, but kept it too low. Yeah, it just wasn't high enough to get over Bianca rolling. If you're going to roll it over Bianca, you got to go just a little bit higher than you would against your own team. Probably a lot higher. Would yeah, maybe a lot higher. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why she's one of the best blockers in the country, but Lindau gets her team the momentum right back, and it's 5-3 Colorado. And there's Colorado again on the slide getting a, yet another kill. Two days in a row last week, Washington had trouble in the third set. Both sets went beyond the minimum 25 to win. A little trouble with Oregon, and then they had a, quite a bit of trouble early in the third set against Oregon State. And right into the block there is Barfield and Nogueres. What a block from those who looked like, or no, I beg your pardon, Roland was up there. I'm so used to it being Barfield up there, but Roland got her arms on that one. I should be used to it being both of them. They are 12th and 14th in the country yes. in blocks. Those pretty good blockers. It's not really detriment when they get it mixed up. It's kind of a compliment. <laughs> and yeah. Sand and Roland, that one just falls right to their feet off that block and a substitution for Colorado here off that point. It's going to be Brown in to serve for the Buffaloes. 
Colorado, the new member of the Pac-12. You'll see the other new member of the conference tomorrow, the Utah Utes. Wow, Bianca Roland. Once again, you marvel at the skill to get up and get down on that one. What a kill for Roland. And you can see right there the difference in connection between Bianca Roland and Jenny Nogueras versus Evan Sanders. She connects much better with Nogueras. See if McLaughlin sticks with her the rest of the season and a kill there from Alexis. Inside the reach of Holford in the backcourt and Roland will take a seat in favor of Orlandini. Kelsey English back in the game for Buffalo as well. For the Buffaloes, I should say. <laughs> Holford. Nogueras, Barfield, and that one miss hit and back. And it's 8-5 Colorado. See if Jim McLaughlin wants to take a timeout here. Not yet. He hasn't used one all day today. Doesn't look very pleased, though. No get ace. Van Sant. What power on that one, but dug out. And that one is long off the block. Beckwith with a great dig for the Buffaloes to make that point possible, and it's 9-5 Colorado. You know, I think there's a time when you have a young team like this that's doing well. You want to let them work through this kind of stuff instead of bailing them out with a timeout, but I would expect Jim McLaughlin to take a timeout here if they don't set out at this point. And Barfield gets a point right there, so no timeout needs to be used right there nope. as Washington gets the <laughs> serve back. Now, is that kind of what you're hoping for? You have a senior in Lauren Barfield in there. You're kind of going to count on her to to get that serve back for your team. Yeah, absolutely. And Colorado is only blocking her with one person, so why shouldn't you go to her? You should go to her all night long. As long as Colorado has one block on her, give her the ball. And that one into the net, and Barfield and Ross have trouble with that one. So the Buffs first to double digits with 10 points to six for Washington. The Go Huskies champ gets going here in Alaska Airlines Arena. Students back in session last week. Refreshing to have them here. Ross comes flying in. Beckwith with a great dig in the backcourt. Schroeder's going to get a chance there. Into the block and out. And it's 11-6 buff. So third straight match. Washington having a little trouble in the third set. And as a matter of fact, against Oregon, 17 ties, 9 lead changes in set 3 against the Ducks. That one is in. I was about to say out because that's where I thought it was going, but that is in. And that Jim ball. McLaughlin will finally take a timeout. I definitely thought that ball was out. It just dropped right at the last second. We'll come back with set number three here on UWTV from Alaska Airlines Arena. Welcome back to Alaska Airline, uh, Airlines Arena, Washington, 25-14, 25-21, having a little trouble with Colorado in set three, 12-6. I'm Michael Preston, Gretchen Killebrew directly to my right. Van Sant with the kill. How bad do they need the freshman to get going if Washington wants to get back in this one quickly? They need a lot more swings like that, but you know what's so great about that play for the University of Washington? It was pass that hit. Rally over, that's it. They need a lot more termination on the very first opportunity they have. Good save there from Valentine and Schroeder just kind of send it back over. Nogueres over to Munoz into the backcourt and looked like all Richardson could do with that one is just try to hit it forward and hope someone could do something with it and a point for the Huskies. And there you see it again. Colorado gives Washington a free ball. Kylan Munoz does her job, puts it away. Van Sant back to serve. Miss hit by Schroeder, a rare miss hit by the junior. Another free ball. See what the Huskies do with it. There's Munoz off the block. Can it be saved? Yes, it can. What a dig by Richardson. And Schroeder with a big mistake on that one. Gives the point right back to Washington. And the timeout's going to be called by Colorado. Looks like Liz Kritza doesn't want this momentum to go away so quickly. Washington with three straight points coming out of the timeout, so a good timeout call by Jim McLaughlin, certainly. And the Huskies now just three down here in set number three. Take a look at the upcoming schedule. Brought to you by BECU. We'll have the Huskies match with the Utes 
tomorrow here on UWTV. Then it's four on the road down into the Bay Area and then down to Oregon. And then right back here, Halloween weekend against both Arizona schools. We'll have both of those for you on UWTV. And then arguably the toughest road trip of the year down to Los Angeles to play the Bruins and the Trojans. That is going to be a tough road trip for sure. So the Huskies coming back out of this timeout. The Colorado Buffaloes, the 5-10, and 0-7 oh in conference. Buffaloes with a 12-9 lead and set three over the 13-1, 5-1 in conference, and third-ranked overall Huskies. As you've said, and we'll say it again, Colorado with nothing to lose but playing their hearts out on this one, and they certainly are. Give credit to the Buffaloes for that one. It's a long trip up here from Boulder. And then they've got to make a long trip over to Pullman. UWTV is your home for UW women's sports during the 2011-2012 season. We'll bring you Huskies to the power of women from Alaska Airlines Arena during the UW volleyball and women's basketball seasons. And with Gymnastics Rewind, we'll highlight the best events from the Gym Dogs. And next spring, we'll broadcast games from the decorated UW softball team. Don't miss the action exclusively on UWTV Channel 27. Krista Van Sant back to serve off the Washington point. Now four straight for Washington. Van Sant with a nice dig right at the net. There is Lydia Blaha. Haven't called her name much at all tonight. Just her second kill on the evening. Colorado extends their lead back to three. Beckwith is back to serve. And Sant keeps that one alive. Then Miguel sets up Ross. Beckwith calling for it. And then she sets up the spike. Now Munoz far side. Great take by Beckwith again. That's the reason why she's fourth in the conference and digs per set. This one going to be kept alive by the Huskies. Nuno sends it back over. Good dig in the back court from Van Sant. That one tapped back over, but Ross diving in with the right forearm. Keeps it alive. And did that one fall? It did. A late call from the officials. It looked like Beckwith might have gotten her hand under it, but we couldn't quite tell. Van Sant gets the kill. Yeah, down there after Mickey Matthews was signaling down, down, down the entire time right after that ball was hit. So it's a good spot there by the officials. Orlandini with the serve. And it looked like Richardson was almost second guessing herself right about as the ball got there, whether she was going to play it or not. Roland sends it over, and Schroeder just going to turn around and try to hit it over, but a good block from Washington. Set her up again and right into the block and back down on the buff side. There's Bianca Roland and Summer Ross again. No surprise there who's in on that block. Yeah, certainly it's Bianca Roland, but I really like the heads up play with. The one play before that, when Kara sort of tried to turn and hit that ball in the second contact, this time the Udo blockers were all over that, where in the first set that ball went down. And that one finds some open real estate. That's Lindau, the sophomore from Erie, Colorado, averaging two kills per set. She's over that average right now with seven total. Just a shade over two. Here's Ross right into the Colorado block and out. Good call by Washington on that one. You heard it maybe a little bit there. Out, out, out. Let it go. So good call by the Huskies. And Summer Ross is so smart, especially as a freshman. We mentioned earlier that she's a two-time World Beach champion. But she doesn't have to hit it super hard all the time. She can just find a hand that's out of place and tool it. And she gets a kill. Van Sant with a great dig from Schroeder. I wouldn't want to get in the way of that one for sure. And that one just falls right in front of Van Sant. Nothing she can do there. A kill for Colorado. And another point for the Buffs. They're up 2, 15, 13 here in set three. And Colorado's doing a great job of still staying on that slide, hitting the ball down the line. So far, UW only has one, one dig. Munoz puts a little mustard behind that one and out of play. So a point for Washington. She draws her team back within one. Watch the power on that one. You can appreciate that even in slow-mo. Oh, yeah. That's such a huge difference she's made from last year. What a big improvement by her. Last year, she couldn't do that, and now she's putting the ball down with authority. 
Lack of communication there. Buffalo, the Buffaloes almost had to put that one back over the net, just be satisfied with it. And no touch by the block on that one and out. So Huskies have this one tied up at 15 apiece. If you're Colorado, you don't want to make errors like that. That's what got them in trouble in the first set. The second set, they didn't do so much of that. They were able to kind of cut those back, but now they're starting to make those errors again. Miss hit by Ashenbrenner. Nogueira setting up Roland off the block, and down she goes, and the Huskies have the lead back at 16-15. This is where Bianca really shined last year, was going behind the setter, off one foot. And it's been really interesting because I think Evan Sanders connects better with Lauren Barfield, but Jenny Nogueras connects better with Bianca Rowland. Munoz has almost everybody doubled, or tripled up rather, in kills with 13 total today, off the block and out. So the Buffs get a point back and it's tied at 16. Lindau back to serve. Off the net, but Ross able to get there to save it. Rolling into the backcourt. And I believe Washington would have gotten the point anyway on that one. It was a great choice by Jenny Nagaris to go ahead and set Bianca rolling. Bianca does what she always does. She gets a kill. One-on-one -on -one gets a kill but gives the point right back on that one, and Orlandini gonna come in for Roland. Buffs tie it back up at 17, but the Huskies, their own undoing on that one. You know, you don't wanna miss a lot of serves, but especially when it's tight like this, you really don't wanna miss the serve. Barfield into the block, but the Buffs able to keep that one alive. And that one into the block, English with the kill for Colorado. And they've got the lead back, 18-17. This one's been tight the whole way. Buffs had a six-point lead a little earlier, but it's been tight ever since then. Barfield rising up, pokes that one back over. I believe that was Brown, who was unable to get a hand under it. So Barfield gets a little kill off the finesse. Nogueres back to serve. Long, didn't touch the block, so the Huskies get a point. They take the lead back at 19-18. You can really see Colorado going after that slide. That time, the set was just a little bit off, a little bit tight, or a little bit tight, a little bit outside the pin. A little bit harder for Kelsey English to get to there, but they're still trying to attack University of Washington on the slide. Off the block, but out. Lauren Barfield kind of wincing at that one. She knew she had a good block, but just misdirected it and out. And Colorado's doing a great job of finding Washington's hands and using them instead of hitting low into their hands and getting them. Right now, Washington has 13 blocks. Colorado only has four. But now Colorado's trying to turn around and use the high hands instead of hitting right into the middle of them. Buffalo's with a big late mistake there. 2019 on the service error from the Buffs. Van Sant back to serve for Washington. Schroeder going to get a chance off her set and out, but barely. And a point for Washington, a two-point advantage. They're now at 21, and Colorado's going to take their final timeout of the set. A good time to do it, and we will take a break as well here at Alaska Airlines Arena. You're watching UW Volleyball on UWTV. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by BECU and Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. Been a heck of a match, 25-14, or 25-21, and now 21-19. I'm Michael Preston, Gretchen Killebrew here alongside as well. Huskies with a good save there, up 21-19 now, and set three on the buffs. And a great kill. Look who it is again. It's Kylan Munoz. 14 a kills. A little bit of the night tonight, just putting the ball away for the Huskies, swinging so hard. And that one off of Orlandini's hand and out. So Colorado going to try to stay in this one. 22-20, the score.
Here's Ross. What a great dig. Now English. Not able to get much English on that one. Here's Munoz coming to the net, and what a kill from Kylan to draw her team two points within a three-set sweep victory, and Orlandini going to head back to serve for Washington. Orlandini back to serve. Schroeder. But Van Sant handles that one. Now Munoz again. Back with there to control that one, though. Schroeder will get another chance into the block, and Washington able to recover from that one. Munoz got to send it back over. A bad set from Nogueres right there. Van Sant saves that one. Coming over to Munoz again. She taps it over, but Colorado able to control that one pretty easily. Schroeder coming to the net. Another good rally here from these two teams. We saw that one on the final point of set number two. Not the final point of the set just yet. And that one, a kill from Kelsey English. And a, no, I take that back. A point from Washington. Or for Washington and out. So 24-20. Washington now on set and match point. Orlandini back to do the honors with the service. Right off the block, what an appropriate way to end it. Off the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week, Bianca Rowling gets her team the final point and a match victory over Pac-12 newcomer, the Colorado Buffaloes. 21, 25-24, 25-21, 25-20, Washington with the victory over the Buffs. And the Buffs have a long trip over to Pullman to face the Cougs tomorrow, and the Utes will be here at Alaska Airlines that we need to face the Huskies tomorrow. Kylan Munoz, what a day for her. 15 kills, hit 39.4% on the evening. Just had an incredible match. What a day for the junior from Monroe, Washington. Had an absolutely fantastic day, and as a matter of fact, Gretchen has been able to nab her for a post-game interview. I'm here with Kylan Munoz. Kylan, you had a great match tonight. What did you see in scouting that made you hit so efficiently tonight? Well, we've been working really hard watching their block this. Um, we can definitely try to improve some stuff and just going in with a good mindset. <laughs> can you talk a little bit about the difference between Jenny's sets and Evan's for you? Um, they were both doing really, really well tonight, but we just wanted to mix it up. You know, it was great that Jenny came in with really good, um, really good energy to really get us back in the game. Kylan, thank you for your time. Congratulations on a great win tonight. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gretchen. That is all for us here from Alaska Airlines Arena. We will see you tomorrow when the Utes are here. 25-14, 25-21, 25-20. Washington with the victory. We'll see you tomorrow here on UWTV.